Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today, we're going to be talking about something that I hope a lot of people, more people would be out front about and, you know, not be scared to stand up and say something because it might seem politically incorrect and insensitive, but it needs to be talked about because it is something that's very serious in our society, um, even more so today. So, what am I talking about? women being mean to women and women thinking that men are just these evil creatures running around on this earth that are hell-bent on making every woman's life a living miserable hell so we're going to be watching this sky news australia um, video about toxic femininity and then we're going to go ahead and talk about some things from just my own experiences and wanting to see if anyone, any females out there have similar experiences or have been in certain situations. Um, if you definitely, if that's definitely even you, you should definitely leave a comment down below and we'll go through your um, comments later on in a different episode. Without further ado, let's get to it. Now the tragic death of Labor Senator Kimberly Kitching is nothing short of shattering as is the reporting that she alleged she was bullied by fellow Labor Senators Penny Wong, Christina Keneally, and Katie Gallagher. Senator Kitching described them as mean girls. Now, to be fair, the three senators said on Friday in a statement, the allegations of bullying are untrue. Other assertions which have been made are similarly inaccurate. Now, when Anthony Albanese was asked about these alleged mean girls, he all but clutched his pearls. <laughs> I find it astonishing that in 2022, I get a question using the term mean girls. I find that extraordinarily disrespectful to describe strong, articulate, principled women like Penny Wong, Katie Gallagher and Christina Keneally. I find it astonishing and a throwback. Decades. Leaving aside the fact that the phrase mean girls was used by Kimberly Kitching herself to describe the women, the term is hardly a throwback. The movie that popularised the term came out in 2004 and the subsequent Mean Girls the Musical took to the Broadway stage as recently as 2017. And most pointedly, the reference to workplace Mean Girls will likely leave a considerable number of women sighing in sad recognition. Despite the cultural perception that men are always responsible for creating hostile workplaces for women, I'd wager you'd be hard-pressed to find a woman who hasn't had a workplace made miserable for her by another woman. Over the so I will say this, um, you know, I've had my fair share of bullying growing up, and I will attest to this. High school, my first time ever being in a public setting was high school. I was homeschooled majority of my life and um, for a little while was in private school. But when I turned 13, I came into this lovely decaying system that is known as the public education system. And what I mean to tell you, what made me become more of a recluse, I was already introverted to begin with anyways, being homeschooled it kind of ended up being that way. It's like a side effect. but. I became more of a recluse, more of an introvert, because not boys, but girls. And yes, boys can be cruel. They can. Children will be children, and they will be cruel. But I've never suffered more than at the hands of hormonal teenage girls. For the majority of my high school, I ate in the cafeteria, uh, I didn't eat in the cafeteria, I would take my food to the bathroom and eat and cry. Every day I was bullied, harassed, I would have girls pull my hair because they didn't think that it was real. Um, and it, it became like, I don't know, the highlight of their day. 
they didn't like the way I spoke because they were like, oh, you sound white. And I didn't know what that meant. I really didn't know what that meant at that time. However, if it wasn't for them bullying me, I never would have gone into tech. Luckily, I had, you know, I was on the honor roll a few times and it was thanks to, how can I say this, white geeky boys <laughs> that sat up in the library and pulled apart computers. We had a computer librarian teacher, I guess you can call her. She took pity on us and let us take apart things in one of the rooms in the, in the library. So I followed them and realized that this was going to be the future. They were really nice to me. And they were a lot nicer than the girls that were at my school. But let's get back to this colorful woman. <laughs> For the last few years, conversations about toxic masculinity have dominated public discourse. The concept even found its way into advertising. <laughs> Who could forget the notoriously feminist Gillette ad of 2019? Bullying. The Me Too movement against toxic sexual harassment. Masculinity. Is this the best a man can get? Is it? We can't hide from it. Sexual harassment is taking over. It's been going on far too long. But what feminists consistently refuse to realize is many of the obstacles women face at work are placed by women. We constantly compete with each other. It begins in the schoolyard and continues into the workplace. Yep. And while men and boys will spar with aggressive confrontation, women undermine each other in subtle, toxically feminine ways and they do it to gain the coveted status of a term first coined in the 1970s by researchers at the University of Michigan, the Queen Bee. An evil takes a human form in Regina George. She's the Queen Bee, the star. Now in a workplace context, the Queen Bee is usually a woman in a senior position who is cuttingly unhelpful to her female co-workers. She may verbally <laughs> abuse them, publicly humiliate them, or use the cover of smiling passive aggression to undermine their achievements or chip away at their confidence. So I kind of experienced something like that in the military. Um, and it was more so with officers. I didn't really care about um, coveting favor with individuals because I did my job in IT and you know, most of the time, people would want my favor with something. So if they were nice to me, I obliged them. If they were not, I would make up so many, like, I'm sorry, your account has been locked. Oh, sometimes I would like purposely lock their accounts because they were just mean people. Um, <laughs> so, so, and I know that's probably not you know a nice thing to do, but when you're IT and you control the fate of people's schedules and emails, it kind of, it's like a relief, but obviously a lot of times I would just do it for like five minutes and then just let it let it go. But I definitely um, had this, I, I definitely faced this with uh, female leadership when they were officers and I really didn't care to make friends with individuals. I just did my job and that was it. If you wanted to be my friend, you could be my friend, but I really wouldn't care to go outside of my comfort zone just to say hello to you. And simply just because I don't say hello to me, hello to you, doesn't mean that I'm a bitch. It just, well, you haven't said hello to me and I have nothing to say to you. It's just as simple as that. But some women can take that as, oh, you think you're too good or, or you're trying to take my spot. And I'm like, you're an officer. The only way I would want to take your spot is if I decided to go OCS. And I don't know why women look at each other like this, but I definitely noticed that when I was in the military. And I definitely noticed that, I would say when I was going through my AIT and everyone's trying to get the, um, the Commandant's Medal. So you only get the Commandant's Medal if you're the first in the class. So 
like <laughs> that included like your P well I don't think about PT but just for it was all it was only based on merit so that means you couldn't miss any classes you had to study 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 and um there would be and let's just say there will be individuals fighting so fiercely for that that medal they would do anything to sabotage their co opponents who they felt like were a threat. So I know what that feeling is like too. This is one of the reasons why I try to stay out of the uh, fields or career fields, fields that are dominated by women. It's so toxic, it's exhausting, and I don't even know how women do it. I just don't. If such treatment is ongoing, which it generally is, the queen bee's prey can suffer serious psychological damage. The prey may either wither into obscurity or quit the workplace altogether. But the most important thing to note here is the queen bee does not treat men the same way she treats women. It's known as the rope ladder effect. A woman will climb the ladder to the top, then pull it up after her so no more women can follow. <laughs> Eventually, the only way for women to work around this queen bee is to join the proverbial hive. The weird thing about hanging out with Regina was that I could hate her, and at the same time, I still wanted her to like me. Okay. You have really good eyebrows. Thanks. Move. Same with Gretchen. The meaner Regina was to her, the more Gretchen tried to win Regina back. She knew it was better to be in the plastics, hating life, than to not be in at all. And in my personal experience, heaven help any worker bee who challenges the mighty queen. For if she does not manage to usurp the throne, she shall surely be damned. Do you know what everyone says about you? They say that you're a homeschooled jungle freak who's a less hot version of me. Uh, yeah. Now. <laughs> I definitely felt that one. It was so close to home. <laughs> Despite toxic femininity being prevalent in many workplaces for decades, why do we only see negative messaging about male behavior at work? From politics to the private sector, men are always pinned as the rotten core of an unhealthy workplace culture. Women, on the other hand, get away with it. Why? Because societally, women are perceived as, dare I say it, children including and indeed especially by i don't know if y'all noticed on my last episode <laughs> where i had said this yes the, my last episode i did say that you know the longer as as i grow older and i'm in certain fields and just looking at life and you know social especially social trends i understand why men back in the day especially those of political power and high-valued men looked at women as children because of this behavior. Um, they don't have to face the consequences. Oftentimes, if they get in trouble with the law, it is a lesser sentence. Um, and I think it's spot on, but we'll let her finish and then come back. Feminist activists. Why else do you think the patriarchy is generally blamed for women being mean to each other at work? While it is of course understandable that women have historically felt like they're competing for limited space at the top, it makes no sense in 2022 to just blame men and their alleged toxic masculinity or unconscious bias for women electing to sabotage their female co-workers. Now to be clear, I am not accusing any specific individuals of engaging in this kind of conduct. But it is time we put a magnifying glass to women's toxic workplace behavior and biases the same way we have to men's and purge the sludge. That is the only way to achieve true workplace gender equality. Okay. So, I 100% agree with her on everything when it comes to this, and this is one of the many reasons why I went into IT field. Um, it, it's kind of strange to me how we 
women say, um, and another reason why I, I 100% believe that this is very common and feels that are dominated by women. We have women out here who will literally brag when they take another woman's man, you know, because A, he's wealthy and all that other great stuff. So why is that such a far cry from a woman trying to sabotage another woman's career, especially when there's a vacancy open that has superiority and a higher salary? Yeah, it's not a far cry. It's not a far cry. And as an individual that has been in IT and I haven't really worked with women who are in um I guess supervisorial, supervision, I don't know, I can't really say this, this word, but um, in a, a role that's a supervisor role, I've had one, and she was really great, she was a really great um, woman, and um, she was more like a project manager, so I still had to report to her, but more so I had to report to my male bosses that were um, in charge of the actual project. She handled like the money and the timing and the schedule, while they handled, you know, tasks and um, they were the product manager, she was the project manager. So I still had to deal with most of my dealings. I've always been with men. I get a task. Sometimes I would feel like it would be so much more than I can handle, but um, they never gave me tasks that they thought I wasn't prepared for or didn't have the skill. Um, they actually encouraged me to have a little bit more faith in myself. And yes, that typically ended up with me working long hours, but it all paid off. I would get applications up and running for them. Um, I would be in charge of setting up a whole entire infrastructure, which was something I've always wanted to do, but was kind of scary because it's one thing to do it all on your own, I'm um, sorry. It's one thing to do it with the help of like an overseer, you know, like a supervisor. It's a whole nother ball field when you're the one who's in charge to get everything up and running. And there's no one that you can really rely on. And you have to stay up hours and hours and hours, you know, work on weekends. And then you understand why, you know, men work a lot. Um, and it, it's a lot harder on them if they don't get something up and running by a certain time um, because they're they're going to have to pay the consequences and bear that responsibility and when you're put in that position you're going to feel that brunt and you're not going to like it if you fail it's, it's it's i guess it's in a way it's like an engineering like um uh problem too where we feel accomplished by the task that we complete and for a lot of us we'll get beaten up or we'll feel down or feel like we have imposter syndrome if we cannot complete our task. So we get our endorphins, our, our I guess our endorphin hit from, oh my God, yes, I got it working, you know? Um, and so I've, I've been in this field for a very long time and I even remember having some co-workers in grad school, well, no, co colleagues in grad school that were female. And my undergrad was math and computer science. I barely saw that many females in, in the you know STEM field and that was back in 2011 from my undergrad. I think I, um, well, started back in 2011. I was still around 2014. I started grad school in 2017 and there's a there was a little bit more, maybe like 5% more females in my graduate computer science program than there was in my undergraduate uh, computer science program. And a lot of them, how can I say this, didn't understand the competitiveness within the world of STEM. A lot of them came from social science backgrounds like English, French, or social, social work. And they couldn't understand the competitiveness in the STEM field where respect has to be earned based off of meritocracy. And, it, it, you know, I've had females get discouraged. One of my friends, she worked for Siemens, um, being their embedded, um, embedded programmer. And she couldn't understand why there would be times where she felt like she was ostracized from the guy group. And, and not really included in the work, or maybe they didn't give her that too much responsibility because of, like they felt like she wasn't as competent. And it, it wasn't that. Um, 
it's like when you're in the playground, right? This is just from my experiences. I had to deal with this in my undergrad. I had to deal with this even in, in my AIT in the military when it came to IT. It's like on the playground. Let's say you have a pickup game of baseball. They're gonna pick the best people that they already know are superior at the sport first, and then you have the leftovers. Okay, let's say the next day you have a pickup game of basketball. The person that they picked first in the baseball game the day before may not be the person that they picked first for the baseball, uh, for the basketball game. Maybe because they're not good in that genre of sports. So just like their sport meritocracy, you also have academic meritocracy. It's the ego thing with men when it comes to who's the smartest, when it comes to mathematics, when it comes to computer science, who can actually get the job done. No one's going to listen to someone who's not smarter than them. And a lot of the times you have to prove that you are the smartest, that you can do something, and you're the guy or the girl to go to when you need this type of problem solved. So I had encouraged her to say, hey, stick it out. It's, it's not, it's not a, a pass of judgment on you. It's just, this is just how the, this world works. Men oftentimes will give you tasks to see if you can do it. And if you prove yourself, then you earn that, I guess that echelon of meritocracy to move up to the next level. They'll give you more responsibility and the more you knock it out the park, you can get, you move up. But, you know, don't expect to come in thinking that you're the MVP when you haven't shown any type of skill. That's how it's always been. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, in IT, if you're a female, you're going to have to just deal with, and it's, it's not like, I've never been around men who were like sexist towards me in IT field. Never. Not one. However, they do want to have, they do want to encourage you to stay in the field. And to be honest, if I can think about it from undergrad to graduate school, most of my professors were all men once. And if, since I was such a, a studious type of student, um, I will always get go into the you know, office hours and all my professors, or most of my professors end up saying I caught the bug. You know, especially with math. Um, they would encourage me to stay in. A lot of them encouraged me to stay in. Anytime I felt like giving up, they would always encourage me to stay in. Because I did have a knack for certain fields uh, or certain topics. Not all the topics, but the ones that I was really good in, they did encourage me. I've had one female professor, and she was from Poland. Great professor. She encouraged me to stay in. But... There wasn't a lot of females promoting other females to get into, or I should say encouraging them to stay in, um, or, I, or I wouldn't even say proactive. And, you know, that, that, you know, that could be saying something. Maybe they'll see, like, okay, so for once, I had this one professor, she was actually black, she was actually from the Caribbean. She didn't like the fact that I was going for a math undergrad and I was taking computer science classes. She was like, why aren't you just going to take computer science courses or just, you know, graduate with a degree in computer science? Because, A, I liked math a lot and I wanted to, I wanted to actually go and write encryptions because I just really liked playing around with math. So she didn't, when I told her that, she wasn't really invested in trying to encourage me to stay in the, in the, um, in the computer science department. A matter of fact, I actually felt like she was brushing me off. So, you know, I, I like, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't not. I've never felt that way with another male professor. Not once. It was that female professor, and crazy thing, she was black, just like me. So, I mean, I have ex I haven't experienced any toxicity from women in my field. Mainly, mainly because there's not many that women in my field. Um, but I will say I agree with this, and if you are a female out there who have experienced toxicity by the hands of other females more so than men, please leave your comments down below. I would like to know your story. All right? Bye!